those themes, they weave in and out of each day. And they're so useful. The silence is some, well, maybe we'll start with that one, is such a powerful communication tool. Um, it's one that I've come to appreciate the most now in, in my maturity. Um, in my private life, my family life, I have lots to say. <laughs> but when I uh, work in a therapeutic relationship, silence um, is something that I, I use a lot more of and I use it deliberately. Um, the patient group that I've described to you that I work with is very fragile. Um, they're weak, they're cacaptic, meaning they're, they're, they're quite emaciated. And they tell me time and time again just to focus on what I've said or to formulate a response takes a lot of energy. And sometimes uh, the best tool, once all is said and heard, is, is just to be silent but present. And I encourage family members, and just this afternoon, one hour ago, I encouraged a family, um, they're watching their beloved spouse and father and brother-in-law um, in his last moments. And it was just to reiterate, your best gift is being here and just being present. Um, it's too difficult to talk, and, and it is so powerful. Another good example of silence is we had to deliver some very difficult news to a young woman in her 30s. Um, the difficult news was that her cancer had now spread to her brain and she was accompanied by a very supportive husband and her whole world was um, with two young preschool children and, and just carrying on her day and having this thought that I'm still going to be here for this amount of time. But the news we now had to t give her meant this time would be shortened only from weeks to months if she made the month. So it's a powerful message. It was um, very difficult to convey and my colleague who's a physician asked me to come with her and she is a very skilled communicator and, and said it in very direct, um, simple terms. And you can only imagine how this is received. It was, it's a sunny day in um, you know, early September and no one should be getting this kind of information, let alone if you're just started your 30s. Um, she, they were devastated. And, and the tears had to come, but they had to be received. And the best way to receive them is just by silently sitting close by. Because what could we really say? What could you say that would make it all better or consoling at that moment? You just had to receive it, but be comforting and be there. We did observe a young oncologist came into the room at that time, and she um, wanted to she knew of the news and, and wanted to say things to make it better. And we, we observed how difficult these words were and how they didn't hold a lot at that moment in time. Um, one day she'll learn that, but that comes with a lot of time and so often we've said things too soon or too much. Um, it was important just to sit with them for quite a while. It seemed like an eternity to us till they um, were able to say the first words. And the first words that she said was, I'm just going to have to live in the moment now. And um, what was interesting to me that a few days later I saw her, she was being taped just like this because she was so involved in her community. And she shared about that whole exchange on that tape and, and mentioned how important it was for her to come to that realization. So I, I was amazed that she was able to share that. So silence is, is a difficult one to use, but I think it's the most powerful, of course.